Hey guys, it's Mr. B here. Um, since you can't be here in the classroom, I thought I would record some videos of the demonstrations that you would get to see otherwise. Um, so here today, this first one, is pretty much me just getting to burn stuff and you getting to watch. So uh, some of these you might be able to do at home. I would caution you uh, about the ones dealing with fire, of course. So make sure that you're using proper safety if you do attempt this. Um, but yeah, let's uh, just get right into it. So to start out with, uh, we're talking about heat, we're talking about thermodynamics uh, and the transfer of energy. Remember, temperature is how hot or cold something is, heat is the transfer of energy. So I've got my trusty Bunsen burner here, and we are going to have a transfer of energy. And we are going to get rid of all the air in the pipes there, okay. We are going to transfer energy to this Dixie cup, okay. So a Dixie cup, mm, sort of paper product, okay. And let's take a look at what happens when put that on top. There's going to be a transfer of energy from our fire to our paper. So make some predictions. What do you think is going to happen whenever I put a fire underneath of a paper cup like this? Well, probably going to burn, right? So smelling like smoke in here smells like science, remember? Uh, but what's happening here is the temperature of the paper cup increases to a point where it reaches its ignition point. So what you're seeing now is the, um, the wire gauze here is actually transferring that energy pretty evenly. Uh, but what happens whenever we heat it up? I'm just going to go crazy here, right? It starts to catch fire, of course. Okay, so then we undergo combustion, right? So the paper cup is burning up, okay? So that happens because the temperature of the cup itself increased to a point where it ignited. Different substances have different uh, flash points, different ignition points, okay? Which is why some stuff appears more flammable than others. I'm just gonna put that in the sink over there. So why am I showing you this? Why am I just showing you burning paper cup? Well, one of the things we talked about in that last video as well was how some substances are able to absorb a lot of energy in order to change temperature. We talked about that in terms of its specific heat and specific heat capacity. So paper, right, our paper cup, oh look, it's right here again. This is a different one, right, has a low specific heat. In other words, it doesn't take a lot of energy to increase the temperature of this cup, okay? Now, we talked about one other substance, water, okay, has a high specific heat of about 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. In other words, it takes four joules of energy to increase one gram of water by one degree Celsius, okay? So what happens if I try this again, but instead of just using the paper cup, what happens if I fill my paper cup with some water, okay? We said that the cup itself, all right, needed to reach a certain temperature in order to ignite. So I'm gonna stick this underneath here, the tip of the blue cone, remember the hottest part of the flame, and let's see what happens, okay? Water is useful for a lot of different things. Water is a really fancy, uh, really special chemical in a lot of ways. Um, its density is lower as a solid, which means ice floats, which is great because otherwise ponds and lakes and other things would freeze from the bottom to the top, or the ice would sink and kill all the fish. And a lot of times, you know, we think about where did the first life come from? Well, in the water. So water is super special. But let's take a look at that. Not much is happening. You might see there's a little bit of charred bit around the bottom. The Dixie cup has a little bit of a lip. But let's, let's get a little crazy. And let me show you what happens if I just put it right on the side here. Look at that. Okay, so we're seeing fire. But what else are you noticing? I love this demonstration because we get the fire, right? Only half the cup burned and where, where do, what do you think that line is? Well that's where the water level is right now because what's happening here is the water inside has a high specific heat capacity so the heat that's going through this cup is going into the water and so the water is absorbing all of that energy preventing the cup from reaching that temperature at which it needs to ignite. So what we'd see is if I continue to do this, I'm, I'm probably not gonna show you uh, this entire length of time because it might take a little bit, 
But let me just scratch off some of the gross stuff at the top here. All right, the ash and chard, okay. Okay. As I continue to heat this up, okay, you see the water in there. It's it's really gross yellow now, right? All that leftover gunk from the burnt uh, cup is in there. Um, I would not drink this. But what happens if, if I add enough energy, the water will actually boil in this paper cup. So maybe you can make a little bet with, with a friend or something and you can say, hey, I bet I could boil water in a paper cup. And they say, oh, no, I don't believe you. Well, you would win that bet because as long as the energy is being transferred to the water and as long as the ignition point of the cup is higher than the boiling point of water, you should be able to actually boil this. So you can sort of see, I don't want to mess up my phone here, but there's some bubbles starting to form on the bottom. You can actually boil water in a paper cup. So hopefully you uh, found this enjoyable uh, as you quarantine yourself, and uh, I'll come back with more demonstrations in the future. So see you guys until next time.